Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the FPL Scope and the weekly walker draft for game week 22. This is not going to be the final weekly walker draft most likely because there is going to be a lot of matches in the weekend in the FA Cup and we're also going to have the FA Cup draw on Sunday where we're going to get to know a lot more about what's going to happen in the future in FPL in terms of blank game weeks and double game weeks for example. So we have confirmed the blank game weeks now in game week 26 with Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs and Luton all having blank game weeks that game week. And we also expect, we already have City and Brentford doubling in Gaming 25, and we also expect Liverpool and Luton to be added to that mix for the double game in 25 as well. So I've taken that into account for this week of Walker Draft with the double in 25 in mind, because we are within four weeks of Gaming 25 now, and we have to prepare for Gaming 25, double in Gaming 25, and then the blank in Gaming 26. But we're going to know a lot more about that throughout the weekend in terms of the future game weeks. Also, Blank Gaming 29 is going to be hugely impacted by the FA Cup results and the draw on Sunday. So there's going to be a lot more news that's going to affect the team probably. So the final edition of the weekly walker draft will probably be presented at uh, or on the FPL School podcast, on, which is going to be published on uh, Monday. I'm going to film that on Sunday with Kevin. So yeah, we're going to have a lot more news. We're also going to have more of an update on what's going to happen with Salah and Son and those guys playing in African Cup of Nations and Asian Cup. Salah as well with the injury issues with him. Don't really know what's going to happen with that either. So Salah is a huge question mark in general for, for the future of this, uh, or for the future of FPL in, in general, especially Game Week 24 when he has Burnley at home. That would be a fantastic fixture for him to be a captain. And then Double Game Week 25 as well would be fantastic for him to be back for but the latest news is that he's going to be out for between 21 and 28 days and that was a couple days ago i think four or five days ago that news broke and that will put him off off entirely for gaming 25 as well i think for the first game at least potentially but personally i think there's kind of a i don't know I, i'm not fully buying that i think they're gonna be some news now soon that salah is doing a quick recovery now that he's finally back in liverpool and uh, the doctors have worked wonders and now he's actually looking to be back for the semi-final or final because we have heard jürgen klopp talk about how he's going to be back there for the final or the semi-final he's sort of been mixing between saying those things and that will be much earlier than the 21 days to 28 days time frame that his agent said about salah so i think we're gonna get some positive injury news with Salah, whether that is him coming back to Egypt for the semi-final in the African Cup of Nations, if Egypt make it that far, or if he's going to be back early enough for Game 24, or at least Game 25 for Liverpool, uh, if Egypt go out of the African Cup of Nations. So we're going to get a lot more news in regards to that as well, and Son as well, who might go out of the Asian Cup early if they lose to Saudi Arabia in the round of 16. That could also happen. That could happen before this uh, this next deadline, by the way. So yeah, just keep that in mind, basically, for the future. But I've talked entirely too much about uh, all the surrounding stuff. Let's go into what you're actually here for, the weekly walker draft. If you're on a walker this week, I know at least one person who is on a walker this week, and that is Kevin himself, my co-host on the FPL School podcast. He has activated his wall card already, uh, and we're going to talk about that as well on the FPL School podcast on Monday. So please subscribe if you haven't already. But without further ado, let's go into the weekly walker draft. Uh, and yeah, just a little bit more preamble. Uh, if you haven't seen these videos before, this is basically a weekly feature for me, as you can see from the title, weekly. Uh, it's a wildcard draft. I'm going to do that every week this season. I have done it since Game Week 1 so far this season, and I'm going to do it all the way up until Game Week 38 as well. I think it's just a nice way to check out what's the best current squad available for you if you had a wildcard right now for like the next four or five game weeks and beyond that as well with the blank game weeks in mind. But with all that said, let's go into the draft where the number one pick is the most important player to have currently in FPL, and for me, that is Phil Foden. Uh, I know a lot of people were put off by his latest performance. He blanked in their last game for Manchester City against Newcastle. City scored three goals. De Bruyne came back and had a goal and had an assist. He's like the new talk of the town. Oscar Bob even provided the winning goal there. And Foden and Alvarez, for that matter, blanked in that game. But I think Foden is sort of getting... I don't know. He was playing a lot... Or he was playing really well right before this game as well. And he did play decently in this game against Newcastle as well. It just he didn't get those big chances. But he did have one major chance that just wasn't counted in the stats because he never got the shot off. Walker basically had the pass to him into the box. And Walker is someone that I'm going to talk about pretty soon as well. Uh, and Foden received it in the box. But the pass was just slightly behind him. So he had to take a step back. And he couldn't really control the ball and shoot it in time uh, for, for him to score. But he was like in the middle of the box fantastic touch or not fantastic touch he had a fantastic chance to sh to to shoot in the middle of the box uh if the ball was provided to him perfectly but it wasn't so he didn't get the shot off didn't get the big chance he didn't get the xg from the big chance didn't even get the goal potentially as well which could have happened if he had been able to shoot there uh, so i actually think he had a pretty good chance to score as well in that game and if he scores in that game 
people are going to be all over him for for the next game week. So Burnley at home next game week, I think he might be the best captaincy choice. I am in between two players. I'm going to talk more about the other option uh, later in this in this draft. But for now, I think Foden is just the best in terms of fixtures for Man City. They have the best fixtures. They have the double. They don't blank in game week 26. Everything is right for City and tripling up on City potentially as the best potential option. So. Uh, I also think Foden is going to be pretty assured for starts. I don't think he's going to be a rotation risk. I think Alvarez is the one who's going to be dropped out. Bernardo Silva was even subbed off earlier in this past game again as well when De Bruyne came back. So, so yeah, I think Foden is secure for starts. I think he has a lot of potential still, even though he blanked last game week. And I think he has just amazing fixtures and plays for the best team in the, in the world, basically. Uh, so, so yeah, Foden is my number one pick. Number two, like I said, Kyle Walker, I did mention him. He had that pass to Foden, which could have been another assist for Walker. He had an assist for Bernardo Silva earlier in the game. And he just looked really, really, really attacking. So you can see he's marked in green there, which means he's a new player in the weekly locker draft from last week. This is actually his first appearance in the in the weekly locker draft this season, I think. Uh, but I haven't really been that impressed by Walker this season earlier. Like, he hasn't really been that involved offensively. Man City haven't been the best defensively. <laughs> But this past game, he had, what, 0.8 expected goal in moment, I think, in total. Most of that is assists because he had a lot of passes. He didn't really have any chances to score. But he just looked really attacking. So I think maybe this is around the time where usually Pep Guardiola sort of tweaks his, his tactics a little bit. And Man City just push into full gear. And they're just amazing. And Walker has been basically a sure starter this whole season for Man City. I don't think that's going to abruptly end. And I think there's a bigger chance that he's going to be more offensively minded and actually provide some goods in terms of assists and potentially bonus potential as well. So, so yeah, I just really like Walker as a pick in general. He also, like with Foden, easy matches, pretty much a certain starter, doesn't blank in game 26 and doubles in game 25. So I think he is uh, pretty much the best, uh, or the, I guess, third best city asset when it comes to game 25. But which is like the major double game where we need city assets but uh, especially now at Holland still injured I think he's the second best behind Foden in terms of city assets and I think he's the second best asset currently in FPL uh, as well and for someone that doesn't have him I walk out in game week 20 I don't have him because I didn't really have that much faith in him a couple game weeks ago now it's looking a lot better I'm kind of looking into ways to getting him now but it's a bit difficult to to yeah make all those moves happen at the same time but either way Walker is still a fantastic pick I think and I think he's not talked about enough of how good of a pick is based on at least the last performance maybe it's just a blip maybe it's just one game and just for that particular game against Newcastle he was meant to play more offensively but I don't know I think he has a good chance of uh, getting attacking returns as well because he did really provide the goods offensively at least defensively maybe not so much the two goals they conceded kind of he was slightly at fault there so I don't know maybe I'm just too high on him now because I'm, I'm I really want him in my team but yeah I just really like Walker and there's a lot of difficult picks this week, I think, uh, in general. But let's move on to the third pick. And that's going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's also potentially injured now for the Chelsea game as well. But he is coming back from injury. He's back in training now. Not entirely full training as, uh, still, I think. Uh, so that sort of puts him off a little bit in terms of value. But especially for that game with 24 fixed against Burnley, we know he's going to be pr probably fully fit for that. And then the double game week after that against Brentford away and Luton at home. Uh, it just looks amazing, and you don't really need him for the next two game weeks either. Uh, he is a nice bonus if he plays, but if he doesn't play or if it doesn't like start and stuff, it doesn't really matter that much. But it's the burn the fixture in game 24, and then the double in 25, just a big selling point for Trent, who, uh, which is why he's the third pick. I just think he's been really good this whole season, had a really nice bounce back year after a really tough year last season. And yeah, he's just vital to everything Liverpool do offensively. Um, on set pieces, Liverpool are really good defensively now all of a sudden, and, uh, and Trent is just a great player in general, especially now that we have a bit more fun with uh, Salah and Son unavailable and Holland unavailable as well, but we'll get more into that as well later in this draft. Number four, we have Cole Palmer, and uh, not nothing really against him. He scored 10 points this uh, past game week as well. Really worked out as my captain last game week. So yeah, I really, really like Palmer still. It's just the fact that Chelsea have really tough fixtures, and they have the blank in 26 without the double in 25, most likely. Maybe the Spurs game, which was supposed to be in game 26, gets moved into game 25 and he gets a double against Man City and um, and Spurs. That's still not the best double game week, but it will still be a nice bonus for him. But Palmer, basically, is just the fact that he's so cheap, he's on penalties, he's providing the goods, he's playing really well now. The touches that he has in each game now is just astounding to me. Like, he has some of the best touches in the, in the league, basically, um, lately. So. 
I think he's playing really well. And I think Chelsea could score against anyone as well. They've showed up in big games before. So I don't really think the away matches to Liverpool and City are that bad. Like you could, you should probably start him in both the, those games, even though they are the two toughest matches in the whole season. Because basically Liverpool and City never lose at home. Uh, but I still think Palmer, especially for those fixtures, fixtures against Wolves and Crystal Palace, and just for the future as well, all the way up until game week 38, you can have him in your squad because he's so cheap and he's on penalties and he's so good. So, yeah, number four pick. He's not like the most vital player to buy right now, but if you have him, there's no reason to sell him. And I still think he's a good buy for, for next week as well if you don't have him at this point. But I think you should at this point just have him in your squad. Um, but yeah, he's the number four pick. Number five, we have Diogo Jota and... No, this is not a knee-jerk from have him having 19 points last game week and scoring two goals, having one assist, because I already had him in my weekly walker draft last week. So that just goes to show that I actually have some foresight into what's going to happen in the future as well in terms of good picks. I think Jota is just a nice placeholder at least, or at the very least a nice placeholder until Salah's back. And also if Salah is out for game 24 and potentially game 25 as well, Jota is going to be a fantastic asset for those game weeks as well. But just the fact that he has two tougher fixtures now against Chelsea and, and Arsenal, and then he potentially might be back in the rotation fold if Salah is back for game 24, makes me not be that sold on him that I have him higher, even higher on this list. But still, he's providing the goods. He's been really good in the last three games. He's had goal returns, even though two of those games he came on as a sub. Last game he obviously exploded, was really efficient, and scored two goals, one assist from 0.51 expected goal moment which is uh, quite an overpay, I guess, or oh, not overpay, but like uh, overperformance from, from Jota. But he just has that in him. He's really good. He's really clinical at times. And uh, and yeah, I, I think Jota is just an amazing player. And that's why I had him last week in my weekly Walker draft. I didn't buy him for my own team, which is uh, something that I really regret right now. I did have original plans of doing Salah to Jota, but then I really wanted to keep Salah because I don't really want to sell him and then buy him back again because that's just expensive and costs another transfer. So I ended up not doing the Salah to Jota move, but in hindsight, I should have done that because Jota got 19 points. But, but yeah, I sort of expected Jota to explode in one of these games, uh, upcoming games, until Salah was back. He just did it at the first attempt. So he goes up from number eight last week to number five this week, Diogo Jota. Still really like him, but when Salah is back, he might be more rotation risk potentially, but now he's providing the goods as well. And it's going to be hard to drop him even if Salah is back. So so Jota is, is still an amazing player. Number six, we have Purvis Estepinian, and he's, again, just a fantastic pick. Uh, he played left center back again, but he just keeps getting uh, points. He got a clean sheet last time, got bonus points. Uh, he takes some set pieces now as well, which is a new wrinkle that I didn't expect from him with Gross being like the main penalty taker or free kick taker for uh, for Brighton. So yeah, Stabinian, just a really safe and nice pick now in uh, in defense. He doesn't have the double game weeks that Trent and Walker has, so that's why he's not higher than them. But apart from that, if he had a double game week, he would be the amazing, like the best player uh, of them all. But he doesn't blank in 26 either, unlike uh, Trent. And he has just really good fixtures throughout Spurs away. It's the only like tough fixture, I guess, for the next like six, seven game weeks. So yeah, he's just a really good pick in general. And you don't really need him for the game week 24 uh, game week either, most likely. So, uh, or you could, could still play him because, because yeah, he is just that guy. He's really good uh, in general. And he might still, he's playing left center back currently, but he might still go back to that left wing back role. He's still getting involved offensively, even though he's playing sort of deeper now than he did back in his heyday, I guess, uh, last season when he was like the main pick uh, towards the end of last season. But he's still fantastic value. So, yeah, number six, easy pick for me, as the opinion. Number seven, and we had, don't have another defender. I am actually pretty happy about all these four defenders, Walker, Trent, Estepinian, and Gabriel. I'm just really sold on all four of them. I don't really see any other defenders that I would like to have in my team. Gabriel, obviously, again, huge score last week with uh, the, the one goal, one assist, and three bonus, or, or two bonus points in the end, I think it was, uh, and a clean sheet. Um, but once again, I had him as number seven last week as well. So it's not, again, it's not a knee jerk thing from for me. I already thought Gabriel was a great prospect. He's been in the week of our draft for, I think, since like game week seven or eight, I had him in the week of our draft. Uh, I, I just think he's a fantastic prospect. When he plays regularly, which he has done all the way since game week four this season, pretty much apart from that one game against Sheffield United where he was benched. Um, ever since that, he has been playing for the best defense in the league uh, statistically. And he's also the the guy with the most goal threat especially from from set pieces i think uh in the league as well obviously you have the likes of trent and stuff who could score from free kicks and, and stuff like that but in terms of just set pieces in, in terms of headers and stuff gabriel has just always been that guy with a lot of chances good chances to score and he's also a beast in the air like he showed now in this last 
uh, game for Arsenal against Crystal Palace with the 5 0 win. Um, Zach Gabriel, again, another really like no brainer pick. I really like him. Um, really like all the defenders. Really like the three midfielders there as well. Uh, the strikers I'm struggling a bit more with, but I am going to move on to the strikers now because they're all going to come in a row. It's basically just there are a couple of like, I don't know, I can't really quite decide which strikers to, to go for the most. Um, there are a couple, I don't know, let's just get into it with the first striker who is the, the main forward I, that I like currently. And that is Joe Pedro. And that's basically down to his price. He's really cheap. He plays really good, uh, has really good matches. He has a really high ceiling as well. We've seen him get a 13 pointer this year. We've seen him get a 16 pointer this year. In one of these games, uh, in the next seven, six or seven games, he's going to have one of those holes as well. So he's just a really nice, serviceable player to have. Uh, most likely starting most week for you, but he could also be benched some game weeks, I guess, against Spurs away, um, against Luton away as well, potentially. But, but yeah, I think he's someone that you could start also, as well in any game. Uh, and he's most likely going to play most matches as well. He's keeping Evan Ferguson out of the team. And yes, they do have some players coming back from injury now. Mitzma's going to come back at some point. Adingra's going to come back when Ivory Coast go out of the African Cup of Nations. Uh, Soli March is probably not that, that far away either. And Ansofati is also coming back. So that's the only worry with Joao Pedro. Maybe when all those guys come back, it's going to be more of a rotation risk. But I think just the quotes from the Serbi, the fact that he said earlier in the season that he didn't really trust him as much. But now he's like raving about uh, Joao Pedro being a fantastic player, which he is because he is playing really well right now. Uh, I think he's just more secure starter now than he was at the start of the season. And if you see in my zombie team videos, I actually had Joao Pedro in my ideal zombie team before the start of the season because I just had a lot of faith in him as the penalty taker for Brighton for a really cheap price and playing, being that versatile and being able to play as a striker or as a number 10 or on the wing. I just think he's a really good pick, even with all the players back for Brighton. And all those players being back for Brighton is not even necessarily a bad thing for Joao Pedro because if he keeps his place he's just going to play for a much better team in Brighton they were so good at the start of the season and created so many chances so he could score a lot of more goals if he just keeps playing and has better players around him so and Ciso is another one who might come back as well so they just have a lot of talent and Stupina has been back a couple couple weeks now they look better because of that as well so, so yeah, I think Joao Pedro is, is basically the best striker that we have currently because the cheap price the good fixtures no blanks yeah, so he comes in at number eight. He is the, the striker that I like the most. But I, there are a couple other players that I have also had in my thought process for um, forwards that I want to have. And it's also forwards that I might also ditch uh, potentially. But the next one is Aldo Waskin still. He was the number two pick last week of our draft. I had higher hopes for him back then, but then he blanked against Everton. Sort of been bad-ish uh, lately. Hasn't really been as consistently good as he was at the start of the season. But we know the ceiling of Watkins and how good he can be. Uh, speaking of Brighton, he scored those three goals or four goals, whatever it was. Three goals, two assists, or I can't remember exactly when he got that huge 26-pointer or something uh, against Brighton. And we know he has that in him. And he has really good matches as well. Uh, Newcastle at home, pretty good match for him. He dominated Newcastle at home last season. Uh, I think he can do it again this season. So he's actually potentially my favorite captaincy pick this week. It's either him or Foden for me. Uh, unless Holland makes a miraculous recovery or the Bruyne is ready to start and play 60 plus minutes. Um, I think Watkins could be the best captain's option this week, uh, which is why I have him pretty high, or not pretty high, which is why I have included him. But his dip in form, also his price is really expensive now, and he feels like the most natural guy you sell to bring in Holland because he's closer to Holland in terms of price than the likes of Joe Pedro and my final striker forward in this in the squad. But yeah, the good fixtures... His um, FBL prowess ever since uh, you know Emery took over Aston Villa, all that thing, all those things combined to make him a pretty good pick. But I'm not entirely sold on him because he has been struggling a bit lately. But he does have it in him to to have those major performances, and I think he can provide the goods again, especially now that Aston Villa have been able to rest a little bit more with uh, less matches and uh, have a bit of a break over this uh, January period, which has been way less hectic than the, the December period where they had just had games left and right and, and center. So, so yeah, I think Watkins is still someone that could bounce back. I'm really afraid to sell him. That's also a reason why I still have him uh, in the drafts, um, especially now against Newcastle. I think I just want to give him at least a Newcastle game. Uh, and then Sheffield United away is also a fantastic fixture for him. And Man United at home, also a decent fixture. Fulham is also a decent fixture. After that, he has really good fixtures. So, so yeah, Watkins is also a decent pick. I'm actually talking myself more into the strikers as I'm doing this video now. Uh, both Joe Pedro and Watkins are really good picks. But, but yeah, there are just a couple other strikers that I'm going to, talk, going to talk more about towards the end of the video as well that I, I also like. But, but yeah, let's move on to number 10 uh, pick and the third striker, which is going to be Dominic Solanke. 
again, a little bit of dip in form. He had uh, not the best game against Liverpool. Bournemouth didn't have the best game against Liverpool. Lost 4-0 at home to Liverpool, who were without Salah and Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, among others. Um, so, so, yeah, that was a kind of a letdown for Solanke. But I know he has just the potential to score a lot of goals. Bournemouth currently, as I'm uh, recording this video, are dominating Swansea, beating them 5-0 as, uh, as I'm recording this. Uh, he scored the final goal, the fifth goal, uh, Solanke. He also had assist for the for fourth goal. Um, so, yeah, we know he can provide the goods. We know Bournemouth have also been a really nice offensive team this season as well. So, I quite like Solanke. It's just the fact that I might sell him also for that game of 25 fixture against Newcastle away. I think that's going to be a tough fixture for them. I think at that point, Newcastle will be more rested. They'll have their, their players back fit, most, uh, most of them at least, uh, Newcastle, and have them fit for a while. So, I think that's going to be a tougher fixture for Solanke. So, I am probably looking into selling Solanke and buying Darwin potentially for that game week but obviously that will make me have three Liverpool players uh, rather than uh, rather than uh, or four Liverpool players if I want to add Salah to the mix as well which I can't do obviously so I would have to sell Jota for Salah in that case or do something else but I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video but Solanke still has good fixtures both before the Newcastle game and then he has Newcastle in 25 and City in 26 I think and then 27 28 29 are really good and he also has that looming double potential double fixed or double game week coming up and that postponed gaming is Luton because of the Tom Lockyer situation um, that's also coming up at some point this season it might still just be chucked into the double game week uh, 34 double game week 37 uh, we don't really know that yet or it could be dropped into like a, a, a regular game week like gaming 28 for example could all of a sudden be a double for Solanke so until that point and especially with the next few fixtures not for Forest at home in uh, in the next game week as well I think he might be the best captain's option for that game as well if you look at the other players Watkins gets Sheffield United maybe drop Pedro against Stress Palace actually or the th the three forwards have decent fixtures in that in that game week but uh, Solanke might be the best captain's option there against Nottingham Forest who have been scoring and leaking goals ever since um, Nuno Espirito Santo took over Nottingham Forest is also the same team that Solanke scored a hat-trick against last time around so uh, I think Solanke is, uh, is potentially the best captain's option that week so for that reason, I also want to keep him. It's just, if Holland is back next week, <laughs> or, or even uh, uh, even before that, what do I do? I, maybe I just wait, because I think the major part about Holland is the fact that we wanted him back for this Burnley at home fixture to be like the main captaincy choice. Brentford away, he might still be the better captaincy choice um, over Watkins and Solanke, um, especially Watkins. So I probably would sell Watkins to Holland if Holland is back fully fit, ready to start in that game week. Um, but, but yeah, so that's why I'm sort of in between Watkins and Solanke, who they want to keep uh, when I want, when I get Holland back into the team. Obviously can't sell Joe Pedro because that would be too much money, and also Joe Pedro is just like a nice enabler. So I don't know. It's up in the air between Watkins and Solanke, who stays if I bring in Holland, and there's also the fact that I might want Darwin as well, if, especially if Salah is out, confirmed out for 24 and 25, if Egypt make the finals and stuff. Uh, Darwin is also someone that would be really nice. But Solanke to Darwin for game week 25 uh, when he plays Newcastle. One Darwin has that double game against Brentford and Luton would be nice. And then uh, potentially keep Darwin for 26 as well uh, and sell Salah or something like that. And then bring Solanke back in for Darwin in game week 27. That is also an option potentially. Um, so yeah, both Darwin and Holland are really close to being in this team as well. But Holland obviously with his injury issues, sort of not making it. And uh, and obviously Darwin as well with the Salah thing. I just want to leave that Salah spot open in case he's back earlier than expected. So, so yeah, that's why I have uh, also the fixtures, the next two fixtures for Solanke compared to or not um, Darwin compared to Solanke and Watkins. It's just not as good. So that's why I prefer Watkins to Solanke for now over Darwin. But Darwin is definitely in consideration for this team as well. Next up, we have number 11, the goalkeeper. We're sort of in the more like uh, latter stages of the team now. It's more like the de facto players that we just have to put in. I can just make both goalkeepers uh, at the same time, basically. 11 pick Dubravka, 12 pick Areola. Still think this is the best goalkeeper combination. Really cheap, really good rotation. They've kept clean sheets here and there, both of them. You don't really expect much from your goalkeepers, so why not just get cheap goalkeepers from pretty good teams? They're both top half teams and really cheap prices so I think it's just a no-brainer to have the Rock and Areola but they're also like kind of uninspiring picks so I don't really have to want to have them higher on the list either because they're not really like essential essential you don't need to buy them for example like you don't need to rush out to buy either one of them but I think it's just a nice thing to keep so on a wild card definitely just default the Rock Areola I can't really see any other options there 
could talk yourself into someone like Ederson, but I don't really like that pick at all. Uh, I, I prefer having someone like Walker who could get uh, attacking potential instead. And it's also easier to sell. Uh, goalkeepers, you don't really want to do goalkeeper transfers, so you don't want to have a goalkeeper take up the spots from Arsenal, City, Liverpool, those teams. So I kind of stay away from Ederson, Allison, especially Raya as well. I'm staying away from those keepers because uh, I just don't like having uh, goalkeepers from those those teams. So the Broca and Ariola are just really nice rotation pair really cheap everything you want really from goalkeepers so yeah keeping both of them number 13 pick this is more spicy i guess mohammed kudus he has gone out or gonna have gone out of uh, the african cup of nations they got uh, booted out of the group stage in a group with gibraltar of all teams uh, they managed to draw 2-2 against gibraltar in the final group stage game and that knocked them out because they are going to be they were third place but they're not going to be among the four best third place teams in the african cup of nations so they have gone out of the uh, group stage already and yesterday I watched Barcelona against Athletic Bilbao in the Copa del Rey and Iñaki and Nico Williams were both back from Ghana already uh, from uh, from Ghana's uh, national team in African Cup Nations and they both well, they both had goal contributions I think and looked really good and Kudus has just been amazing this whole season I know as a West Ham fan how, how good he is as well uh, there is that slight bit of rotation potentially because now West Ham are looking to sign or have potentially have already confirmed the signing of Callum Phillips by the time you watch this video. Uh, they're also looking into potentially buying Callum Wilson, also looking into getting Wilfred Nyonto on the left. So that just leaves less spots available because if Callum Wilson plays up front, then Bowen has to play on the right where Kudos plays basically. Even if they don't sign Callum Wilson and Bowen still plays up front, they have Nyonto play on the left, pushing Paqueta into the middle, but the middle is also full of now Kevin Phillips, James Ward-Prowse, uh, Alvarez and Suchek, four players that have been really highly selected by um, David Moyes this season. Antonio is also on his way back, so the rotation issue is kind of a thing with Kudus, but at the same time, I think Kudus is just <laughs> like one of the best players in the league, uh, especially apart, uh, apart from the big six. Uh, he's just been amazing this season, even for Ghana as well, scored twice against Egypt. Just looks amazing. Death experience Bournemouth as well. After Bournemouth conceded four goals against uh, Liverpool, you could easily see him score a lot of goals in that game. He could potentially be the best captaincy option as well this week. So I just like Kudos for that reason. I think he's going to be back uh, fully ready to play. He's going to start against Bournemouth. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that. Man United away. I think Man United is a decent fixture for pretty much any player. Arsenal at home. I think West Ham have just have a weird uh, spell on Arsenal currently. He beat them twice already this season. And this is at home as well at the London Stadium, so I don't even think that game is too hard. Nottingham Forest away, you could also easily bench him in that double game week. Don't really have to play him there, but Nottingham Forest is still a really good good fixture if you want to play him or if you want to bench boost with him. Uh, and after that, West Ham have okay fixtures as well. So I, I kind of like who this is a pick, but just the rotation, if, they, if West Ham get all these signings over the line, could be an issue. But I don't know, it's just the fact that they both have Kudus and Bowen who basically play the same position or the best position is the it's the same position so that kind of makes it a bit more uh, uneasy but i think Gudis is just too good uh, to be ignored and i ignored him earlier in the season when i really should have brought him in uh, when we had those or west ham had those injuries and Gudis was just amazing at that point uh, afcon obviously made a lot of people sell him and not that many people have him anymore so i really like him as the differential pick as well so i just really like Gudis, but at the same time i don't know i'm not entirely sold on I mean, either and I also need a spot for Salah potentially so I'm not sure if that would be Jota being sold, Kudus being sold, potentially Foden being sold if De Bruyne comes back and Foden all, all of a sudden gets rotated and stuff I don't think that's likely but that could happen but yeah um, there is a, quite a big uh, guy I've dropped to bring in Kudus so I'm going to talk about him in the missed player section at the end of this video as well but Kudus I just really like him in general as a player he's been amazing this season and, uh, and yeah Bournemouth at home seems like a good fixture uh, for him as well. Number 14, Jared Branthwaite. Again, nothing fancy here. Branthwaite got another six-pointer this last game week against Aston Villa, which is a really nice uh, achievement as well, getting a clean sheet against Aston Villa. I think Branthwaite is just a solid pick, someone that you can trust to be on your bench every single game week. But if you need him, he can step in and get a clean sheet against pretty much anyone because Everton have proven that in even the bigger games, they can get clean sheets against tough teams. So I think Branthwaite is just someone that you could easily bench for six points. Not that many people are going to start him in most game weeks uh, anyway. He's not going to explode uh, and have like a 20-pointer that you miss and all of a sudden everyone else has him for that for some reason. Um, he's just a really trustworthy, nice player for a really cheap price. So I think he's just the best cheap defender in the game, basically. So he keeps his place, but he's nothing like extraordinary. He's kind of like the goalkeeper. He's just kind of like a de facto player to have there. 
uh, on your bench most likely most weeks but yeah Brantford is, is an amazing player and uh, and yeah just really like him in general as a pick number 15 we have Granacho still he kept his place from last a week of awkward drafts barely I d- just don't see any other at that price cheap midfield options it looked like for a little moment there that uh, Ivory Coast would go out of the African Cup of Nations in the group stage that would have made Simon Adingra a much better pick I think uh, for just a little bit more uh, with those great fixtures for Brighton and with all those players out for Brighton as well I think that would have been a nice pick at least for the short term uh, but I think Renato as well is serviceable in his own right kind of like Brandt Thwaites someone that you can easily bench someone you can easily start as well he could get points but Garnacho, he's kind of the opposite of Branthwaite. I think he's more like a two-pointer, 13-pointer kind of player. Branthwaite is more like a six-pointer, six-pointer, two-pointer, six-pointer, six-pointer. Like he's more consistent, while Garnacho is more uh, up and down, I, I, I would say. So you could bench him for 13 points one week and then start him for two, two points the next game week, which is why he's sort of like not the most interesting prospect. Uh, but at the same time, and then they'd have good fixtures, he's, re- he's a really cheap price, and he's just a nice enabler for you to get potentially Salah and Holland in your team. Because as you can see, the TV Clock Draft does not have Salah or Holland in, in the team. Salah obviously is, is more of an easy choice because most people assume he's going to be out for at least tw- game 24, potentially game 25, the first game as well. So most people aren't that interested in Salah long term, but if Salah is back, you need that flexibility. And I think just having the flexibility in general of having a cheap squad gives you the chance to do all the moves that you want you could do Joe Pedro to Jarvin all of a sudden if it looks as like Salah's out then you can do that move uh, if you prefer that if you if Watkins is like all of a sudden find their form again you can buy uh, De Bruyne in for Kudus for example if you want you just have so many options uh, to to do stuff with if you have a lot of money in the bank and with this team I think personally I think I have like 11 or 12 million in the bank with this current team I think the team value uh, the total value currently with like the current price of all players is around 91.8 or something. I can't remember exactly the, the price, but it's a really cheap team. We have the option of getting in Holland and Salah, and that would be the preferred uh, route uh, if everything goes to plan, if Salah is back and Holland is back at a reasonable time. So that could be what you do. You could save your chance for in Game Week 23. Or you could use it to get uh, Holland in for Watkins if it looks like Holland is going to start that game. Um, and then uh, for game week 24, uh, yeah, you could you could basically get in Salah and Holland by the game of, by the uh, by the start of game week 25, and have the best possible team for game week 25 as well, and still have a couple transfers and a team ready to play in game week 26 as well. No Spurs players in this, only one Chelsea player in Palmer in this, so. Not too many players blanking. It's Trent, Palmer, Jota who are blanking, I think. Only three players blanking in, um, yeah, in that game week, it looks like. Um, yeah, uh, so, so yeah, you don't have too many players blanking in game 26. You have a lot of players doubling in game 25. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it's a nice team in general. But let's wrap it up with the players that have missed out from last time around. Let's just uh, have them there. You can see on the list, I have four players listed in green, which means they are new players in the squad. Walker, Trent Alexson, Arnold. Kudus and Joe Pedro, they are new from last time around. That means four players have dropped out as well, so let's talk about those guys. Starting with the fifth pick last week, which was uh, Alfie Doughty. I think that was kind of a dumb move, because looking into the future, yes, he has that double gaming fixture in game 25, but that would mean you have to bench either Estepinan or Gabriel against Sheffield United or Burnley away, uh, or potentially benching both in those fixtures. So you don't really need Doughty for gaming 25, and then he blanks in gaming 26, which is obviously not ideal. So, so yeah. He has been dropped and makes way for um, for either Walker or Trent Alexander Arnold, who are obviously much better picks, much more expensive picks, but still better picks. Uh, number six is the more interesting one, Saka, and he was the last player to be cut out of out of the team to bring in Kudus basically uh, at the end. I think Saka is just a nice placeholder for now. He's also obviously, if you have him, if Salah's back, it's easy to swap from Saka to Salah at that point. Also don't know yet if Arsenal are going to blank in 29 or not because they have they are, have been knocked out of the FA Cup. So there is a higher chance that they're going to play in 29 and that might affect my thinking as well for the future. So that is something that might change for the weekly walker draft, uh, the final weekly walker draft that I'm going to present to you on the FPL Scope podcast uh, on, on Monday after we know more about the potential blanks in game 29 as well. But Saka is just like an uninspiring pick in terms of points lately, hasn't gotten the most points, but Arsenal are looking better and better now, I think. Uh, they're creating a lot of chances uh, in terms of uh, underlying stats at least they've been looking better and better especially Saka and now they got that huge final win against Crystal Palace and I think 
they're going to be much better now after that little blip in form uh, recently. Uh, and I think Saka could still be a good option. But he's just a bit uninspiring because Arsenal, as you can see from the Gabriel fixtures there, uh, Nottingham first away, which is a decent fixture, but it's still away. Saka has always been a pretty bad player away from home. Liverpool at home, not the easiest fixture as well. Uh, obviously, Liverpool is a really tough team to beat. Uh, not, not the best fixture either for, for Saka. And then West Ham away, again, tough-ish uh, fixture away. Uh, and like I said, West Ham have sort of the upper hand on Arsenal currently, it seems like. And then Burnley away is obviously a great fixture in game week 5 but that's also the game week where you could potentially have Salah with a double game week. You could have, uh, obviously, Jota has a double game week, Foden has a double game week. There's a lot of good players in that game week, so you don't really have to play him that game week either. Uh, so yeah, I just think Saka is a bit uninspiring, but he's also just a nice safeguard because everyone has him still in their team. Maybe that will change in the upcoming weeks. Maybe we'll see that. At the same time, Arsenal have been looking better. They have been posting better underlying numbers, and they beat Crystal Palace 5-0. Saka did blank in that game for, for what it's worth. He almost had the assist for Gabriel uh, on the second goal, but... But yeah, I, th I still think Saka could potentially get something there. He's also the penalty taker most likely, so could get some points from that as well. So Saka is a tough guy to leave out, but for now, I just prefer Kudus and his like little bit of spice compared to, to Saka, I guess. Number 13, Holan. I expected him to be fit for this game week, and he's not looking likely to be fit to play or at least start against Burnley in game week um, in this upcoming game week. And that means that he is no longer the best captain's option this week, so that means he drops out of the team. But obviously, he's on standby. We have the money in place to do basically any striker to Holan if need be for next game week. Most likely, it would be Watkins if Holan is back ready for next game week. But Brentford away. You could argue that you could wait another game week or potentially two as well to bring in Holland for him to be back fully fit and ready to play 90 plus minutes every single game because he has been out for a while now as we've seen with De Bruyne he is not going to be fully back into starting games again uh, after being back in full training I think it took like two or three weeks for De Bruyne being back in full training before he actually got minutes like actual minutes for Man City and yes Holland has been out for less than De Bruyne so maybe that time is shorter but yeah, don't really know yet what's going to happen with Holland, so we, we have to wait out for news with Holland. Obviously, they could also change uh, by the by the Monday uh, or the episode on Monday with the Phil School podcast. Maybe Holland is looking more likely to start. Maybe I have to get him into the team, and I have to drop one of the other forwards. So, so yeah, I'm gonna take note of that as well. And finally, we have Gusto, who is sort of too late to have now in FPL, as you can see from Chelsea. Like I mentioned with Palmer, they have those tough matches against Liverpool and Man City. And they also blanking him in 26, which is not ideal, and that's why we have to drop Gusto because, because yeah, he doesn't really provide the goods there. He has been looking really attacking uh, for Chelsea the last few game weeks. He probably should have been sent off last time, but he did get a clean sheet last time at least. Uh, he showed also in the game, the game week or two prior, he also showed that he could get three bonus points quite easily if he if he gets the clean sheet. So, so yeah, Gusto's still a decent pick, but just the fixtures for Chelsea and the blank and all that stuff. He's also injured at the moment like slightly injured at the moment which means he's a pretty easy guy to cut out especially when we want to have walker and trent back into the team as well so or into the team so so yeah gusto drops out as well but that has been all the players i've talked for about 40 minutes now i have to go to bed because i have to go to work early tomorrow so uh, so yeah that's basically it for for now for this uh, this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you stay tuned for the field school podcast on monday on tuesday i'm going to have the final team selection video for me as well for my actual plans for game 22 with my own team uh, so subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like on the video if you haven't as well, that's going to help uh, massively for this channel, I'm still trying to grow it, I'm still, uh, I need to get, uh, whatever the expression is, uh, pull a finger out your ass or whatever, <laughs> I don't know, I'm rambling at this point, but I need to just uh, finally get sort of the graphics and the intro and all the stuff that I want to do, um, I'm going to do that at some point as well and make, make a little bit of a refreshment to uh, the channel as well, but yeah, subscribe if you want to see anything of that uh, apart from the finger the thumb out of my ass or whatever the thing i said anyways let's end this video now before uh, it gets demonetized or whatever i don't even know uh thank you for watching and goodbye